This video was brought to you by our backers on Patreon like Timothy L. Find out what exclusive stuff you can get access to and back us on Patreon by clicking the link below. You might have noticed over the last few weeks that a bit of a political crisis has been developing in Northern Ireland. Brexit, among other factors, has shaken the country, not only producing new problems, but also resurfacing old issues and fractures. So in this video, we're going to explain the current political crisis in Northern Ireland and have a look at what might happen next. To do this and to understand the crisis, you need to understand three other things first. One, why unionists aren't keen on Brexit's Northern Ireland protocol. Two, how power sharing works in Northern Ireland. And three, the new decade's new approach deal. Let's start with unionism and the Northern Ireland protocol. As we explained in myriad other videos, unionists have never been keen on the Northern Ireland protocol, which is why they didn't vote for Johnson's Brexit deal. This is largely because it creates a regulatory border in the Irish Sea, which, according to unionists, creates a dividing line and undermines the union. To give you a sense of how much unionists dislike the protocol, all three main unionist parties in Northern Ireland, the DUP, UUP and TUV, brought a legal challenge against the protocol in February, which was only dismissed last week. Anyway, we're not going to go into too much detail about it now because we've discussed it in depth in other videos, but all you really need to know is that unionists are serious and they really don't like the Northern Ireland Protocol. The second thing is power sharing in Northern Ireland. According to the 1998 Good Friday Agreement, the Northern Ireland government in Stormont doesn't have just one leader. It actually has two equally powerful joint heads of government, the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister. Since the St Andrews Agreement in 2006, the First Minister has been nominated by the largest party, and the Deputy First Minister has been nominated by the largest party in the second largest community designation, where a community designation can either be Unionist, Nationalist or other. In practice, because the largest party has always been a Unionist party, since 1998 the First Minister has always been a Unionist, and the Deputy First Minister always been a Nationalist. In fact, since 2003, the First Minister has always been from the DUP, and the Deputy First Minister always from Sinn Féin. Ministerial positions are also allocated to parties with significant representation in the Assembly, which means that the Executive Committee, which is essentially the Northern Ireland Cabinet, always ends up being multi-party, with today's Executive Committee holding members from five separate parties. Anyway, this is important because it means that a Northern Irish government needs both unionist and nationalist consent in order to function. If nationalists and unionists can't agree on a government, then under the Northern Ireland Protocol of 1998, they have six weeks to negotiate, otherwise a snap election is triggered. The final thing to note here is that if either the First Minister or the Deputy First Minister resign, that automatically brings down the other one too. On to the last bit of context we want to highlight quickly, the New Decade New Approach deal. Essentially, in 2017, after what was known as the Cash for Ash scandal, the Northern Irish executive collapsed. It then took them three years to negotiate a new executive, which happened in January 2020. The January 2020 deal, called the New Decade New Approach deal, was brokered by the UK government, and specifically then Northern Ireland Secretary Julian Smith. In it, unionists agreed to implement certain legislative provisions surrounding the Irish language, which nationalists had been asking for for ages. These included granting official status to both the Irish language and the Ulster Scots in Northern Ireland, establishing an Irish language commissioner, and repealing a 1737 ban on the use of Irish in Northern Ireland's courts. In return, nationalists agreed to implement the changes via amendments to existing legislation, instead of introducing a brand new Irish language act, which unionists really didn't want. Anyway, preliminaries aside, let's get into the current crisis. So, the crisis probably started on April 28th, with Arlene Foster's resignation as the leader of the DUP, the largest unionist party in Northern Ireland. The proximate cause of Foster's resignation was the fact that she abstained from a vote on banning gay conversion therapy, which most of the DUP opposed. But it was really because of the Northern Ireland Protocol. 
Essentially, unionists apparently blamed Foster for overplaying her hand in the Brexit negotiations and thought that Foster hadn't done enough to oppose the protocol since. As Foster was no longer the leader of the DUP, that meant she also had to step down as First Minister of Northern Ireland. And as we mentioned a second ago, Foster's stepping down also forced Michelle O'Neill, the Deputy First Minister, to step down from her post as well. The DUP then went about trying to find their next leader, and there were basically two candidates, Edwin Poots, the MLA for Lagan Valley, and Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, the MP for Lagan Valley. Poots was seen as the more hardline of the two, although it's worth noting that both of them were very much against the protocol in its current form. It's also worth noting that Poots is a creationist Christian who believes the world is 6,000 years old, didn't think that gay men should be allowed to donate blood or adopt, and once proposed that women should pay for caesareans to encourage natural births. Despite reports of intimidation by unionist militias against Donaldson's supporters, on May 14th the vote went ahead anyway, and Poots won with 19 votes to 17. Poots was then officially inaugurated on May 28th, at which time he decided to appoint one of his allies, Paul Given, as First Minister instead of himself. But in order to do this, he had to agree to some sort of deal with the nationalist MLAs, because as we mentioned a second ago, Foster's resignation as First Minister had collapsed the whole Northern Irish executive. Sinn Féin therefore insisted that Poots agreed to implementing the Irish language provisions agreed in the New Decade New Approach deal, which Poots did, on the condition that they were introduced by the UK government. However, it seems that unionists never really planned on holding up their end of the bargain. Once Poots agreed to the Irish language provisions, DUP MLAs immediately made clear that they didn't agree, and Poots was ousted, having been in the job for just 21 days. Now, at this point, you might be wondering why unionists are making such a fuss about Irish language provisions. And there are essentially two reasons. Firstly, the debate has been trundling on for about 20 years now, so it's become politically symbolic. And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, the protocol has made unionists increasingly anxious and defensive. This is classic politics. When you feel like you're losing, you're far less likely to compromise. So why did Poots agree to it then? Well, it's likely that Poots just miscalculated. But it's also likely in part because if no agreement was reached and the UK government decided not to intervene, this would force an election. And the DUP really don't want an election. Recent polling has found that DUP support is sitting at about 16%, with the other unionist parties, the UUP and TUV, at 14 and 11% respectively. That's a serious drop since the 2019 election, when the DUP won with 31% of the vote. Or even the most recent Northern Irish Assembly election in 2017, when the DUP won 28% of the vote. This is because hardcore unionist DUP voters have moved to the more hardcore unionist parties, like the TUV, who've taken a stronger stance against the protocol whereas more moderate unionists have been put off by the DUP's hardening rhetoric about the protocol and their social conservatism, and have seemingly switched to parties like the Alliance. Essentially, the Northern Ireland protocol has split the unionist vote. Is that Shin What's particularly worrying for them is that Sinn Féin are currently polling at about 25%, putting them on track to be the largest party in Northern Ireland at the next election. While the First Minister and Deputy First Minister are technically equals, having a nationalist First Minister in Northern Ireland would certainly be a psychological trauma for unionists. Anyway, after Poots resigned, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson became leader, again pledging to scrap the Northern Ireland Protocol. To avoid another round of negotiation, Donaldson left Given as First Minister and promised a proper reshuffle in September, when presumably Donaldson would leave his position as MP to become First Minister. And this is where the crisis sits today. The reason we're describing it as a crisis is because there doesn't seem to be any nice way out of this. Unionists don't want to accept the Northern Ireland Protocol, but for the protocol to go, either the UK has to align with the EU more, which Brexiteers won't accept because it apparently infringes on sovereignty, or the EU has to avoid checks on goods entering the single market, which, let's be honest, isn't happening either. Essentially, there's no obvious solution when it comes to the protocol. 
And in the meantime, while the protocol exists, the Unionist vote is splitting, and the Unionists are getting increasingly defensive, in part because a split Unionist vote opens the door to a Nationalist First Minister, as well as the fact that the protocol inherently feels like a threat to Unionism. And it's hard to see a way out of this, because the protocol is forcing more hardcore Unionists towards the TUV, but the DUP can't appeal to these voters without losing their more moderate supporters. Essentially, while the protocol exists, Unionists will get increasingly defensive and anxious. So it seems that uncertain times lie ahead for Northern Ireland, something which isn't likely to help the already strained Union. We're curious to hear from our Northern Irish viewers though. What do you think will happen next? What do you think should happen next? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As I said at the start, videos like this are made possible by our Patreon backers. In return for their support, they get a whole variety of perks, like early access to videos, exclusive live events, merch discounts, and more. Find out what you can get and sign up by clicking the link in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video.